This course is designed to ensure employers, management, and workers understand the hazards associated with uncontrolled energy and the proper methods for controlling these hazards. This course is made up of five content modules Lockout and Definitions, Hazardous Energy Control Program, Lockout Devices and Steps to Lockout, Lockout Processes, Alternate Hazardous Energy Control Methods. Tags can be effective as a visible warning but do not offer any substantial mechanical means of preventing the transmission or release of energy. An example of an effective isolating device would be levers or valves with aligning lock holes. Individual Lockout It is essential that authorized individuals have the training, knowledge, and experience associated with the equipment or process to be locked out. Each individual has the responsibility for their own safety, and therefore should be issued their own personal lock. The lock must be then applied to the appropriate energy isolating device prior to performing any service or maintenance on the equipment. They must also verify that the equipment has been effectively de-energized. Administrative controls include the following safe work practices and procedures. Minimizing the potential of loose clothing, hair and jewelry coming into contact with moving parts. Adequate lighting. Proper job preparation. Training. Personal protective equipment. Most lockout injuries and fatalities can be traced to one or more of the following causes. Failure to stop equipment. Failure to correctly disconnect from the power source. Failure to dissipate stored energy. Accidental restarting of equipment. Failure to clear work areas before reactivation. Injuries or fatalities associated with the release of uncontrolled hazardous energy are preventable and unacceptable. Your employer must ensure that when servicing or maintaining equipment, a lockout program is in place and procedures identify how to lock out specific machinery and processes.